Richard Gordon Scott was sustained an apostle in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on October 1st, 1988. He served previously as a member of the first quorum of the 70 and in the presidency of that quorum. He was born in Pocatello, Idaho to Kenneth Leroy and Mary Whittle Scott. He graduated from George Washington University as a mechanical engineer, served a full-time mission to Uruguay, and completed postgraduate work in nuclear engineering, a field which he worked for many years. He presided over the Argentina North Mission in Cordoba, Argentina. Elder Scott is blessed with a gifted wife, Janine Watkins, to whom he was sealed in the Manti Temple. She passed away in 1995. They are the parents of seven children. There's so much more that I could say about Elder Scott, but he likes short introductions. And so I will just add that he loves our Father in Heaven, his beloved Son, and all of the Father's other children. Some of the things that Elder Scott did in his high school was high school president, playing the clarinet in his band, and he also was the drum major of his marching band. Some of the things that Elder Scott did to earn money to go to college were working on an oyster boat off the coast of Long Island. He cut down trees in Utah for the forest services and he repaired railroad cars for the Union Pacific. In April 2011, Elder Scott gave a talk about the eternal blessings of marriage. One of the stories he gave in there was about him and his wife during Valentine's. He says, I remember one year we didn't have the resources for me to give her a valentine. So I decided to paint a watercolor on the front of the refrigerator. I did the best I could, only I made one mistake. It was enamel paint, not watercolor. She never let me try to remove that permanent paint from the refrigerator. Campfire at Sunset, the African Plain. Latter-day Saint Apostle Elder Richard G. Scott shares his watercolors with the public. What's interesting is that even through his own um, busy schedule, he's done this as a way of kind of his own hobby and yet documenting some of the places he's been and the messages that he's 
picked up from them. The exhibit shows 40 years of capturing moments in life, from a nuclear engineer to a church leader who loves to express himself through art. Elder Scott writes, creativity can engender a spirit of gratitude for life and for what the Lord has woven into your being. Creativity gives a renewal, a spark of enthusiasm, a zest for life that we all need. It's one, a surfer off the coast of Brazil. That you wouldn't think that a member of the 12 would paint something like that, and yet it was kind of the, um, the story behind it is just a fascinating story on why it was important to him. Elder Scott says the gigantic waves represent trials and temptations that we can be unaware of. And his favorite, his beloved wife, Janine. The original hangs in his office. She died in 1995, and this gives Elder Scott comfort. In our marriage, Janine found just the right time to talk about something I know she had probably noticed ever since we had met. She said, Rich, when you talk to people, look in their eyes. You look at the ceiling, the walls, the floor, but you never look in their eyes. That suggestion profoundly changed my life. My precious companion loved me enough to help me by telling me what I needed to know. During the April 2011 General Conference, Elder Richard G. Scott gave a talk entitled The Eternal Blessings of Marriage. The message I received at a personal level from this talk is that two of the vital pillars that sustain Heavenly Father's plan of happiness are marriage and the family. The message that was shared was profound, but yet simple at the same time. My heart was open and I was able to learn more about being a better father to my children and a better husband to my wife. Elder Scott spends most of the, most of the time talking about his wife who had passed away and the great example that she had been in his life and the lives of their children. I began to think of my wife and all the amazing things that she does for our family. I was profoundly touched by this quote given by Elder Scott. Righteous love is the foundation of a successful marriage. It is the primary cause of contented, well-developed children. Who can justly measure the righteous influence of a mother's love? What enduring fruits result from the seeds of truth that a mother carefully plants and lovingly cultivates in the fertile soil of a child's trusting mind and heart. Hearing these words created for me a greater love and appreciation for my wife and children. Elder Scott continues to talk about the importance of marriage and starting a family. Marriage is a big part of our spiritual growth and the roles we play in our mortal lives. After listening to this talk, I was impressed to teach my children the importance of marriage and to make that a priority in their lives. I know that marriage has blessed my life and I am a better individual because of it. My wife strengthens me each day and I am grateful for all the sacrifices that she makes to make our home an eternal dwelling of happiness. Elder Richard Scott teaches us the importance of eternal companionship. 14 years ago, the Lord decided it was not necessary for my wife to live any longer on the earth. He took her to the other side of the veil. I confess that there are times when it's difficult not to be able to turn and talk to her. But I don't complain. The Lord has allowed me in important moments in my life to feel her influence through the veil. What I'm trying to teach is that when we keep the temple covenants, 
we have made and when we live righteously in order to maintain the blessings promised by those ordinances, then what come what may, we have no reason to worry or to feel despondent. I know I will have the privilege of being with that beautiful wife whom I love with all my heart. And with those children who are with her on the other side of the veil, because of the ordinances that are performed in the temple. What a blessing to have once again on the earth the sealing authority, not only for this mortal life, but for the eternities. I'm grateful that the Lord has restored his gospel in its fullness, including the ordinances that are required for us to be happy in the world and to live everlastingly happily lives in the hereafter. On December 26th of 1996, while serving a mission on Temple Square, we were blessed to have Elder Scrot address us at our monthly mission devotional. As we sat in the choir seats of the tabernacle, he expressed his profound love for the Savior and then gave us great counsel on how we could become better disciples of Christ. He shared how much he wanted each of us to know how wonderful we were and how the church needs the support of the women. He talked about seeing women in the world turn away from what was most important, to be beautiful inside. He stated, being beautiful inside will help you cultivate your gifts from God. Elder Scott continued to teach us about the principle of being virtuous and to remember that we set the tone and standard in a relationship with men. He counseled us to not do anything alone with a young man before marriage that we wouldn't do in front of our parents. Even though we were missionaries, he felt inspired to remind us of our worth and his desire for us to be clean to enter the temple with our future spouse one day. He promised that we, as we follow the standards of the Lord and not of the world, it would grace, greatly bless our future marriage and family. Elder Scott reminded us to write down the miracles we would see as missionaries and make that a habit for the rest of our life. He shared with us steps to help develop and build our testimony. The counsel he gave on how to be a great missionary and develop our testimony applies in my life today. By sharing our testimony, studying the scriptures, and seeking to know the will of the Father, it would help prepare us for the blessings that Heavenly Father has in store. We could increase our faith by getting to know the prophet as he was prepared in their pre-existence and studying the life of the Savior in the scriptures. He counseled us to come to know who he is and to know what he's done. He cautioned us to never be casual when speaking of the Savior. At the conclusion of his talk, he evoked an apostolic blessing upon us. He said that as we go throughout our life, we need to remain obedient to the laws of God and have faith in the gift of interpreting what the promptings of the Spirit are telling us. If we do so, the Spirit would confirm in our heart that we have found the companion that the Lord wants us to be with. One year later, I had been off my mission about four months when I was sitting in our singles ward Sunday school class. In walked this tall, handsome, blonde man that sat in the front row. It was not two seconds later that the Spirit testified to me that somehow this young man would become part of my life. The Spirit brought back to my remembrance the blessing Elder Scott had given us sisters on our mission. It was then that I knew that this young man, man would be my husband. It was later that night that he showed up to my apartment for our ward prayer. I overheard he was from California, which is where I was from, and we began a great conversation. He left and my heart was smitten. It was only about 30 minutes later he called and asked me out on our first date. Three weeks later we were engaged and married four months after that. I bear testimony that Elder Scott is an apostle of the Lord. Sixteen years, sixteen years later, I know that the word he spoke that December day were the words that the Lord wanted us to hear. I know today, as I did then, that he is an apostle called of God to help guide us in these latter days. Elder Scott provides a wonderful example to us about the importance of spending time with our children. Once I learned an important lesson from my wife, I traveled extensively in my profession. I had been gone almost two weeks. I returned home one Saturday morning and 
had four hours before I needed to attend another meeting. I noticed that our little washing machine had broken down, and my wife was washing the clothes by hand. I began to fix the machine. Janine came by and said, Rich, what are you doing? I said, I'm repairing the washing machine so you don't have to do this by hand. She said, no, go play with the children. I said, I can play with the children anytime. I want to help you. Then she said, Richard, please go play with the children. When she spoke to me that authoritatively, I obeyed. I had a marvelous time with our children. We chased each other around and rolled in the fall leaves. Later, I went to my meeting. I probably would have forgotten that experience were it not for the lesson that she wanted me to learn. The next morning, about 4 a.m., I was awakened as I felt two little arms around my neck, a kiss on the cheek, and these words whispered in my ear, which I'll never forget. Dad, I love you. You're my best friend. If you're having that kind of experience in your family, you're having one of the supernal joys of life. My favorite quote from Elder Scott is, if you want to talk to God, pray. If you want him to talk to you, read your scriptures. I love this quote because it reminds me that communication with our Heavenly Father is not just one-sided. I can receive direct answers to my problems when I read the scriptures. One of my favorite quotes from Elder Richard Scott is when he said, strong moral character results from consistent, correct choices in the trials and testing of life. Your faith can guide you to those correct choices. This is my favorite quote because trials strengthen our faith. As our faith increases, choices we make become obvious and our character becomes defined. My favorite quote from Elder Scott is, Since the Lord will not force you to learn, you must exercise your agency to authorize the Spirit to teach you. I like this quote because it feel, I feel that it represents what we are doing in the Pathways program right now. Uh, we are exercising our agency in our classes and assignments, and this allows the Spirit to help us learn. Elder Scott said, Just when all seems to be going right, challenges often come in multiple doses applied simultaneously. When those trials are not consequences of your disobedience, they are evidence that the Lord feels you are prepared to grow more. He therefore gives you experiences that stimulate growth, understanding, and compassion, which polish you for your everlasting benefit. I love this quote because I know through our trials we are able to catch glimpses of what Heavenly Father knows we can become. Elder Scott has shared wonderful insight on how our trials can bless our life. I know as I begin to understand that trials are hidden blessings, my love for the Savior will increase. That is a good way to face the unpleasant things in our lives. Not complaining, but thanking the Lord for the trust He places in us when He gives us the opportunity to overcome difficulties. I love this quote because it's a great reminder that our purpose on earth is to grow and to stretch ourselves. I testify that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a resurrected being of perfect love and compassion. I witness that He gave His life that we might live eternally with Him and our Father in Heaven and our loved ones who qualify through obedience to the commandments and receipt of all of the ordinances of salvation. I solemnly witness that I know that the Savior lives.